à l'anglais. Merci. Merci de votre ambiance. Thank you. It would be worse for us if we had to speak Chinese or Japanese or well, Korean or this kind of thing. So we thank understand. you, everybody. Um, maybe somebody can tell me what I said <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> okay, so I hope that was a good start for the morning. Um, so I'm John from uh, Manverge, um, and we work on cloud computing. Um, and uh, cloud HPC is in fact the fastest growing segment in HPC. And it's becoming more and more mainstream. And the reason is that cloud computing promises incredible things, right? Agility, uh, scalability, and low cost for users. But from this conference, I've learned that um, actually things are not quite as rosy as uh, we'd like to see for cloud computing. So here, um, I've learned that there are still lots of barriers to entry for um, people who want to use cloud. So first, um, there's uh, the question of compliance, especially for people in uh, doing clinical research. There is the question of complexity. Um, so AWS has over 600 types of different VMs. So how, how do you choose those? And, um, and also, uh, a lot of the uh, scientists or researchers depend on the cloud admin group to, to manage their, their cloud um, infrastructure, which then takes away a lot of the agility that they need. Um, and let's not forget that cloud cost has become quite an issue, right? Um, if you just look at uh, the cost of maintaining a server on-prem versus cloud, unless you are utilizing the server full-time, the cost of the cloud will far exceed that of an on-prem infrastructure. So uh, if we peel things back, even beyond the initial deployment, what are some of the challenges that we see with uh, doing HPC in the cloud. So we very often get uh, this right-sizing issue, I call it. So right-sizing says you want to use the right kind of resources in the cloud to run your workload, right? But we very often don't know what the right size is a priori, right? So that's why you run into this OOM, out of memory error, which is quite common uh, when you run your workload. And when you encounter OOM, in a lot of the cases, your application will crash and then you have to start over again. Um, so, and things get even more complex when you're looking at the real-time utilization of your application. So most applications uh, have peaks and troughs in utilization. So in order to handle the peak utilization, you often have to provision uh, in an instance of your uh, cloud server to, uh, to match the maximum utilization. Even if for 95% of the time of the execution of the application, your instance is over-provisioned. So the um, resource elastic elasticity and pay for what you use, those are actually quite hard to achieve in the cloud. Another example of resource uh, efficiency is uh, very often we find that people uh, go home and leave their machine on. And, and when you're not using that machine, you're still being charged for it, right? So um, it's ultimately, you need a very efficient cloud operation to really uh, help you uh, maximize the benefit of the cloud. Um, and then on the right-hand side of this slide, I show the, uh, this concept of uh, spot instances. Um, so how many of you are familiar with uh, spot instances in the cloud? Okay, so most of you are, right? So as you know, cloud are very, uh, spot instances are very inexpensive, but they are unstable, right? The cloud provider can take it away from you when a 
when someone paying full price needs the same resource. So in that case, what it means is a lot of the applications cannot be run on spot because when the spot gets taken away, you lose all the progress and you have to start from the beginning again. So uh, we, we built a software product to address a lot of these uh, issues and it's called uh, Memory Machine Cloud. And the reason it's called Memory Machine is that Memverge started uh, as a company that did a lot of research and development in memory management. And uh, we used a lot of these memory techniques to realize what's needed. So the way Memory Machine Cloud works is that uh, we provide a control center that you can deploy in your cloud account. And it's a very small machine um, that becomes you know, ultimately the brains behind your cloud operations. And it uh, allows you to submit your computation jobs. Every time you submit a job, it'll create a worker node that's dedicated for this job. And on that worker node, we have an intelligent agent that monitors the utilization of resources, and we can take a lot of um, intelligent actions. So. Um, to give you two examples of what we can do, right? Um, we developed a, a techno te technology called App Capsule. So the idea is that we have the ability to capture the state of an application uh, and store all that state in a you know capsule. So the state, what does the application state mean? Application state means all the uh, data in memory, or the data in uh, CPU, uh, as well as uh, data in storage. Uh, that's information that's needed for you to continue uh, an application. So we, we have the ability to capture that uh, very quickly without any changes to your application. Now with the App Capsule technology, we can do these two use cases. The first one is called Spot Surfer. So we just talked about the Spot instance. Right. The problem with spot instances is it gets taken away with very minimal notice. So what our software can do is when we get the signal that your machine is about to be taken away, we put the state of your application in an app capsule, and then we can move that app, cap app capsule to the next available spot instance where your application can continue from that previous point. So you never lose the progress that you've already made and you can continue on, on the new machine. So that means that all of a sudden, most of your applications can take advantage of the lower cost of spot instances. This, the uh, other use case, it's similar, but it solves a different problem. We call it Wave Rider. So we talked about the peaks and troughs of utilization for applications. Um, so when uh, our agent detects that the actual real-time utilization of resources of your application is not matching uh, what's available on that machine, we can move your application to a new machine that is right-sized for the application. So that means if we detect that your application is about to run out of memory, before the application crashes, we will put the application in a capsule and then move it to a machine with more memory where it will continue. So we save you from uh, the OOM era. Similarly, if we detect that your utilization is far below what's available on the machine, we can move the application to a smaller machine where you pay less without sacrificing any performance, right? So it's like riding the wave of uh, the utilization and we call that wave rider. So, uh, another benefit of our software is that we provide observability of the real-time utilization of resources. So on, on this chart, uh, this is a GUI that uh, shows the actual utilization of your application. And you see it's, uh, uh, it's like a wave. And, um, and also, uh, the blank, the white portion shows that uh, we are moving this uh, workload from one machine to another machine. And uh, this is a load generator, so it's very smooth, right? But we know that 
when the application's uh, memory utilization hits the 100% threshold or near there, we move it to a larger machine, then we move it to a larger machine. And then when the utilization comes down, we move it to a lower machine, right, a smaller machine. Uh, and all of that, of course, is, is automated. So once you submit the job, you don't need to worry about uh, this. So here are two real examples of uh, how uh, the system has fared. Uh, so Megahit is an um, assembly tool for uh, metagenomics. And uh, so as you can see, this application has um, pretty sustained CPU utilization, but the memory utilization uh, is bursty, right? So when it starts up, it uses a lot of memory and then it tapers off. So in the baseline case, we used an on-demand instance with WaveRider turned off and uh, it ran for uh, about nine hours and uh, the cost was uh, $9.10. Now we, we took the same workload and the same data set and we ran it on a spot instance with WaveRider turned on. What happened was instead of using a single VM, we used three VMs, right? The, the, automatically the system picked three VMs throughout the execution. And we were able to complete the job in five and a half hours and coming at the cost of about $2, right? So of course these prices change because the price of spot instances change. But the idea is that typically you can save 60 to 80% on the cost while doing equal or better in performance. So uh, we think that this is very compelling for uh, people in, in the bioinformatics space. So, but it's not all uh, so simple. Uh, so we, we ran uh, Metaspades uh, on, uh, on this. And uh, as it turns out, we still realized tremendous savings when we moved from the on-demand instances to the spot instances. But when we turned WaveRider on, uh, we actually didn't get any advantage. In fact, you know, things got a little bit more expensive. And the reason we discovered was that the way the software was written, it detects the amount of memory that's available and amount of memory and CPU that's available at the beginning. So even though we change the capacity of the machine during the execution, the software wasn't able to take advantage of the additional uh, resources. And that, you know, so that um, made it uh, less efficient because we, um, we incurred the slight overhead of moving between different machines. So that's uh, the problem that we want to uh, solve uh, in our uh, roadmap. So, so it's, so it's, it's certainly um, not the final product, uh, and we are still uh, improving that. Uh, another example I want to share is that uh, a lot of the uh, applications or a lot of the users use workflow managers to automate the process of job uh, submission in the cloud. So, for example, we have a customer who is running uh, Nextflow, and this Nextflow pipeline uh, generates uh, somewhere around 5,000 jobs for this one pipeline, right? And uh, without our without our software, uh, when it attempted, when when the user attempted to get 5,000 spot instances in the cloud, the cloud simply said, "Well, we don't have so many spot instances available," right? And it was stepping on each other or se stepping on themselves. So after 17 hours, the pipeline failed because it couldn't get enough um, resources. And also, uh, they didn't want to run all on, on demand either because 5,000 jobs, 5,000 machines is getting too expensive. Now, using our technology, we were able to help them mitigate that and remove the uh, spot reclaim or handle the spot reclaim gracefully. So they were able to finish the same job in five hours and also save a huge amount of money because they don't have to uh, restart so many times. 
Okay, so in summary, MM Cloud is um, a cloud automation platform, and our Wave Rider technology provides continuous right sizing of uh, cloud resources for your application. And uh, we strive to deliver lower costs while delivering better performance. And uh, we are working on improving the product to handle or to, in, to, to better handle applications that are not so uh, intelligent, quote unquote, in resource utilization. Uh, and we are also working on supporting GPUs and multi-node type of applications um, uh, so that they can help uh, more apps. Memory Machine Cloud also is, um, we have a free version and we have a trial of the pro version, uh, both of which are available through our website, memverge.com. Okay, that's all. Thank you. So I think we have uh, time for one or two questions. Ooh. Well, he, they have a stand, so you can, you can even see him. But the first hand up was David. Hi, um, thank you for your talk. Uh, very interesting. Um, so can we also use WaveRider like um, deciding on our own when we want to like not make it dynamically? Because sure. for example, Trinity is a really long running assembler yeah. for transcriptomic data and yeah. you know where it uses a lot of memory yeah. and where not. So can we decide on our own what, what it has to do? Absolutely. So uh, that's a great uh, point. It is actually most efficient if the application or the user can give us instruction or hint on when to do the wave writing. Um, we have heuristics and we have um, algorithms that, that detect the need to do wave writing, but we also give hooks to your application to actually send explicit signals. Uh, and in other cases, like you use uh, RStudio or Jupyter to run uh, your workload in an interactive environment. We also provide a widget where you can, uh, you know, on demand, cause the uh, application to switch to larger or smaller instances. So yes, definitely. Okay, thank you. Okay, there was for a second question, and then you can go with him. Hi. So uh, we also moved our HPC to uh, the cloud, actually, over OpenStack at the beginning of this year. And um, one of the, the, the offers that happens uh, in our OpenStack provider, which is our organization, is that they will overcommit machines. So they like imagine a machine has 10, uh, 20 cars, uh, they will give me 18 and they will give 10 to someone else for the same machine because me and the other user will not be using all the cars at the same time. Yes. But it can theoretically happen. Right. Yes. So my question is, do you have anything that in this case would also work with OpenStack there where more from the provider side over committing the machines would stop one instance yeah. and freeze it? Uh, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Um, so uh, today we only support the big public clouds like AWS and Google. Um, but we do have plans to support OpenStack based uh, either public or private clouds. And what you said, the overcommitment, that's the same concept as a spot instance, right? So they may have slightly different mechanisms to uh, decide who is using that uh, machine and who gets priority. But ultimately, when uh, a currently running workload is being evicted uh, in favor of a higher priority process, uh, it's the same as the um, as the as the spot instance. So we just need to be able to capture that notification, and then we can trigger our app capsule process. So for open cloud, when we do support that, we we will be able to uh, have that use case. Thank you. 